Good morning, Internet. It's another fantastic day here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And um, I have been up since before sunrise as per usual and just got done uh, with a workout. So it's time to get back in the gym. Special shout out to Yahira for being my gym buddy and kicking my butt through a workout. I'm going to do it again tomorrow. So that's what's going on with me. Here's what's up. Y'all, I made this video about, I made a couple of videos about the Tesla announcement with the semi-trucks. Um, and close to 200 comments later, I feel it's time to address some of my skepticisms because um, I may have been misinterpreted. So, I realize that the 500 mile range that is proposed by Tesla is plenty. I get that. Um, everybody keeps commenting uh, things to the effect of, um, well, you have to stop more often than that to pee anyway, so while truckers go and pee, he can charge. Okay, conceptually, I absolutely agree with where you're coming from. I see what you're trying to say. I see what you're trying to communicate. Um, but practically, I still don't think that you're really thinking this through, those of you who just say, oh, you have to stop more. That's a long time to drive without stopping. Um, the issue is not whether or not the trucker will have to stop. Of course, the trucker will have to stop. Um, I've been on many road trips myself, and even though I'm not a pro, I'd like to think that I, I road trip pretty well, and the longest amount of time I can pretty much do is a full tank of gas in whatever I'm driving, um, and when it's time to stop and refuel, that's about when I need to get out and stretch my legs and stuff. Now, granted, I've never driven anything that has the kind of range that, you know, a, a semi truck by international or Kenworth has, um, where, you know, some of these trucks can go close to a thousand miles with the massive diesel tanks that they have. Um, that's not, that's not the issue. It's not whether or not the trucker will have to stop. Of course the trucker will have to stop. The issue in my mind is at the time, the time at which the trucker needs to stop, will there be a supercharging station there? Now we have truck stops all over the country. We've got, you know, loves and all of these truck stops all over the place, um, that service, Truckers almost exclusively um, is how they make their money and out in the middle of the country. Um, now, there's enough truck stops we know to fuel the trucking industry. We know this because we have a trucking industry that is able to get fuel whenever they need to. My concern is, will we have as many superchargers as there are truck stops? Because right now we have diesel trucks that have a range of 800 to 1,000 miles um, and they're able to get fuel whenever they need to. Now we have an electric Tesla semi truck that has a range of 500 miles. So they're going to need even more in my mind, they're going to need even more supercharged stations than there are truck stops. I got a lot of you in the comments saying, well, what, what kind of regen system are they going to have? What kind of braking are they going to have? What kind of this, what kind of that? Um, you don't know. They're going to probably be able to regen a lot. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Who knows? I have no idea what that technology is going to look like. What I do know is that I have um, regenerative braking and regenerative coasting in this car. Now, this is a 2012 Chevy Volt. This is extremely different from anything we're talking about. I get that. But concept-wise, I know I can count on regenerating, rege regenerating through regenerative braking and coasting between on my daily, my daily route, which is over 60 miles, between 60 and 80 miles, depending on what my day looks like. Um, I can count on regening between four and nine miles, and that's on a really, really, really good day. Um, on my the back stretch of the two fifteen, that's mostly downhill off of the Lone Mountain exit. Um, you know, is where I get most of my regen in. But if there is a bunch of traffic, if there's an accident, if there's construction, then I have to change my braking habits. I have to change my driving habit. I might have to navigate around something. All of a sudden, my regen's out the window. Traffic screws me out of regen all the time. So if a trucker is counting on regeneration to be able to get that extra distance, if that's factored into part of the range and something happens on the highway um, where the, the route changes, there's a detour, there's not as much downhill as they planned for, it, it could be any number of things. Um, and they get screwed out of that region and that was something that they were counting on. Well, now that's not going to work, are they? To all of you who say, put a bunch of solar panels on top of, on top of the, the trailer. Yes. Absolutely. Why would you not put solar panels on top of the trailer? I think the best that you could hope from the solar panels, though, given the yield of even high efficiency solar panels, um, is for it to be able to run accessories on the inside of the, the vehicle, um, the inside of the cab, or to, um, to sort of support auxiliary functions. I don't know how many miles you'd actually get out of a solar 
solar panels. It doesn't hurt, like, since the sun's shining up there anyway, like, why not get some solar panels? Absolutely agree with you. It's not going to, get, it's not going to get you 500 miles, though. It's not going to get you the extra 500 miles to compete with, um, you know, the diesel semis. So, now, hub-to-hub shipping and hub-to-hub trucking, where you have a central distribution hub. Uh, we have quite a few central distribution hubs out here um, for various things, for, for UPS, for Amazon. Um, I think, I can't, don't quote me on this, Walmart may have one out here. I know we have several grocery chains that have distribution hubs here. Um, and what happens there is the trucker doesn't take the truck out for a week at a time. Um, the driver gets up in the morning, goes, gets in a truck, delivers all the things that need to be delivered for an eight or 10 hour shift and then goes home. And that makes sense. You know, the hub to hub, I think electric's absolutely the answer for that. There's no reason to burn diesel if you don't have to. Um, the maintenance is going to be a lot cheaper. It's absolutely the ideal situation or the ideal solution for the hub to hub shipping. Um, but for the long haul trucking, I do not believe that the 500 mile range is enough. I don't believe in it. Um, and the, the reason for that is, is that it's a really big goddamn country guys. It's 3000 miles from one coast to the other. Um, and that's rounding the number off. And that's as the crow flies. That's not as the interstate runs on the highways. It's a lot longer. Um, you know, with twists and turns and, and the highways have to navigate topography and geography. And so, and on, on the interstate web, uh, this network of highways that we have, who knows what the actual length is going to be of excuse me, of an actual, of an active run, um, across the country and say you're okay. You got your 500 mile range and you have a 900 mile trip. That's not unheard of, um, to have 900 miles to drive to, to get to places. And for those of you who are truckers who are watching, please go ahead and comment. Feel free to correct me, but 900 miles happens. Um, and you burn through, um, 300 miles of your charge. So now you have 200 miles of range left and your nearest charge station is 300 miles away. Now that's not going to work, is it? That is what I am talking about. That is what I am skeptical about. I think they're going to need more range. Um, and I, I see no reason why the Tesla electric semi truck shouldn't replace hub to hub shipping, uh, and, and that kind of transit, um, almost immediately. There's no reason why it shouldn't immediately replace that. Um, not every truck, it, like, this isn't, it's not being sold as a solution for all trucking ever. Um, it, it, my response being skeptical about the 500 mile range is for long haul trucking, cross country trucking. Now we have more than 500 miles, um, from where I live in Las Vegas to where my sister lives in Reno. Like it, it's, it's a long, I mean, it's a big country. It's a very, very big country. Um, we have this massive North American continent to traverse and I am still skeptical about a 500 mile range. 500 miles is, it's nothing. It goes, it's, it's a drop in the bucket. And then you have to be able to count on at the time at which you need to stop as a trucker, as the driver needs to stop, will there be a supercharged station there or not? And if you can't count on the charge station being there, then it is immediately not a practical solution for long haul trucking. And then if you can count on the, the station to be there, are there going to be enough um, plugs available for you? Are there going to be other Tesla semis that are, you know, lined up, taking up all the spots? How long are they going to be there for? Are they going to park all night? What are like, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's a lot more to talk about. And the announcement that Tesla made last month um, didn't contain all of those details. And there's no reason it should, because this, there, this thing isn't supposed to come out for a few years. They have a lot of bugs to work out. My skepticism was with the numbers that they proposed and the way that it was sort of being sold. They was sort of suggested that this was going to replace all semi trucks basically instantly. And that was sort of the way the internet reacted to it. Like, that's it. The diesel is dead. Like guys, the diesel's not dead. Um, diesels are, for what they are, they are efficient, they are powerful, and we have an entire industry full of people that know how to work on them, that know how to utilize them, and um, it, it they, they have the range, they have the range that other, that, that these electric trucks aren't going to have, and we already have the infrastructure in place. Now, I realize that's the way it's always been done, is the worst possible reason to keep doing something. That's not what I'm suggesting. I'm not saying like, oh, we already do diesel, so everything should be diesels. Like, that's not what I'm saying at all. Electricity is the future. Electric vehicles are the future. 
it's absolutely coming because fossil fuels are a finite resource and that's a fact. Like sooner or later it will run out and we will need to replace it with something. I am, my skepticism is not about any of those things. I, I, I know that gas motors, I mean, their days are numbered. We don't know what that number is, but their days are numbered. My skepticism is in the range of the thing for long haul trucking. And if, when the time comes at such time that the truck needs to be recharged, will there be a charge station available? We're talking about building a massive network, a huge infrastructure of these mega charging stations um, to service the needs of an entire nation of of trucking. Like everything that is in your pantry and your fridge right now, unless you live an agrarian lifestyle where you live on a farm and you grow your own food and raise your own livestock and slaughter it and package your own meat, like everything in your house got there on a truck one way or another, like it got to your grocery store on a truck. Now those central hubs, um, that, you know, service that grocery store, those could absolutely be, um, Tesla trucks that are doing that. My skepticism is who stocks the long haul trucks. You know, all of the oranges that come to my house from Mexico or from Florida here in Nevada, you know, all, all of that has to be trucked across the damn country. Um, who's going to do that? Is that going to be a Tesla or is that going to be a diesel? Like once it gets to the hub, I can see that being a Tesla, but getting it to the hub is, is where I, that's where I, I still see diesels being used. I do. And, um, man, I don't, I don't know. Um, we got a lot of truck drivers that can easily be cross trained to drive, um, and you know, maintain electric, trucks like that. I'm not, I don't have any problem with that at all, but we also have a nation full of diesel mechanics that work on these things that are going to be out of work. Um, this is, this isn't a change that's going to come overnight. Those people are going to need to be retrained. People are going to lose their jobs. That's, that's some stuff that's going to happen. Like, and that's what happens with progress. And those things aren't good things. Like I don't want anybody to lose their jobs. You know, those shifts that are going to come in the economy, there's going to be some growing pains. Um, this is a lot more complex than can the truck do the job. Like, of course the truck can do the job. It's Elon Musk. It, it'll do the job and, and it won't have tailpipes. It'll have like rainbow dispensers and shit. It's like, that's, I'm not concerned about whether or not the truck is going to work. I, my skepticism is in the diversity of its application. Um, I don't know how many different ways it's going to be able to be applied. So hopefully that clarifies my opinion a little bit. I really hope I get another 200 comments and 10,000 views on this one because you guys have been so excited about the Tesla trucks and really into what's going on and this, this new age of progress that we're finding ourselves in right now and these announcements from people like Elon Musk. Um, so keep it coming in the comments, guys. Let me know what you think. Like what, what, what do you really think about, um, now that I've, I've clarified my point about the 500 mile range and what that actually means. Um, do you think that there's going to be able to be mega charge stations in every loves across the country? Like are all the truck stops also going to have, um, electric vehicles or since they make their or electric vehicle charging or since they make their money selling gasoline and diesel fuel, are they going to be reticent to sign contracts and to allow, those things to be built, you know, like I imagine they're going to charge for the electricity too, but you know, is the profit margin going to be the same? And, and when companies start chasing down those profit margins, like they're going to want to maintain the same kind of profits they had with, with fuel that they're going to want to maintain those profits across to, to electricity. I have no idea what that means to the economics of the thing per kilowatt hour. I have no I don't have that education. I don't have that knowledge, but I know business. I have a business degree and those companies aren't going to want to sacrifice those profit margins that they had in fuel, um, for, you know, a smaller profit margin for, uh, electricity. Also, here's the thing to charge up one of these things. It has to be parked for several hours to charge it all the way up from flat. Whereas a diesel can refuel in, you know, 20 to 30 minutes tops, uh, and then get out of there and then they can get the next customer in. So that's the other thing to consider. I mean, there's a lot of things around this. They can't just cycle out that, um, that charge bay as quickly and have the customer turnaround, the customer turnover that they, that you can have at a gas pump. 
Um, there's a lot of things to consider about it and a lot of other businesses that are going to be impacted other than just the trucking industry itself. And, um, you know, this is super narrow. This is just the truck stops. I wonder what this is going to do to the cost of electricity for all of us, because the more people that are using electricity, the less electricity there is to go around. Like that's how that works. We're going to have to build infrastructures that are capable of creating energy, um, in a much more efficient way. And from hopefully more renewable resources. I live in Las Vegas. Our electricity comes from Hoover Dam. Um, and you know, people are like, Oh, freaking Hoover Dam. Like that's, that's reliable and everything. But here's the thing about that Lake Mead, we have our lake level that drops, I don't know, like a hundred feet a year or something ridiculous like that. Like they can't even map the lake fast enough. We have boats bottoming out in places that used to be 20 and 30 feet deep, um, from people who have been boating on the lake forever. Like the environment is changing and things are changing. Like I, I'm not saying that the dam's going to run dry. I'm just saying like our methods of generating electricity, um, you know, a lot of places still use coal. A lot of places still use diesel. Um, and there's hydroelectric power. Like there's wind farms and solar. Like we're going to have to find new ways to get the electricity for all of these new electric cars and all these new electric trucks. Um, what's that going to do to the cost of electricity for the rest of us? You know, when you go to charge your iPhone up, what's that going to do to the, the, how much it costs you to fill up that phone? Because as demand for electricity goes up, supply is going to go down before they figure out a way to generate more of it and prices are then going to go up. What do you guys think about all that stuff? Um, I, I get that I, I'm kind of excited right now and I've been talking for a while. I seem a little um, counter, but that's those are my thoughts for today from the inside of the Chevy Volt on Tesla semi trucks. And I really want to know what you guys think. Um, I I've gotten some, some fairly hateful messages about my opinions about electric trucks and electric cars, this whole Tesla thing. But I, I, most of all, more than that, I have gotten a lot of really thoughtful people who are very invested in this idea of what our future is really going to look like and who are excited. And I have really enjoyed talking to a lot of you guys. Um, I appreciate the time that you take to formulate your ideas and articulate them in writing and to send them to me. Um, it really means the world to me. And this has been a really engaging and very rewarding experience for me. I got a lot going on in my world. Um, I don't have a lot of extracurriculars that are just, just for me and just for my own pleasure and just for my own fun. And this channel has become one of those things. And it's something that I really enjoy doing with you guys every day. Um, you make it fun. So keep the comments coming. Um, please like and subscribe. And I am Catherine with EVs of Nevada. I hope everybody's having a great day.